Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I uh, am going to go ahead and kind of make a little tutorial slash guide for you guys. Uh, for those of you guys who bought, purchased, and or have Warcraft 3 and are having some issues with try trying to figure out how to play games because I know like the system has changed over time. I'm going to start you guys off with a super basic tutorial. Uh, just know that this is also stickied in my Discord. So if you type exclamation mark Discord on the live stream, uh, you can find it there. And it's also stickied in, I think, the TKOK original video. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cover and explain how to host games for free, uh, since nobody's really going to be paying for any of this stuff. And also a little bit of a class info slash tutorial for the starting up in TKOK. So the first thing is first, we are going to just launch Warcraft 3. Uh, if you're having issues launching Warcraft 3 since they did some changes, remember to make sure you're launching with your Warcraft 3 launcher and not your Frozen Throne. You shouldn't even have a Frozen Throne launcher anymore. Uh, and your game is going to look like this. It doesn't actually go full resolution until you're in a game. So you're just going to connect to Battle.net. It really doesn't matter what gateway you connect to because when you host with a bot, which is what we're going to host to, it hits typically every single uh, location. There are obviously going to be some bugs and errors. Sometimes the bots don't host on all the realms, but I mean, there's nothing you can really do about that unless you want to research it. So while we're at this spot, I'm going to go ahead and bring up this website called Ent Gaming. Now, Ent Gaming, um, essentially, you can create an account, and this is what's the key in the Discord. Uh, if you look over in my Discord over here, let's just show to confirm. Uh, in the Warcraft 3 chat, there should be a pinned message and this is exactly right here in a text file what I'm going to tell you guys. So, uh, step one, you are going to go to Enterprise Gaming, or if you don't want to use Ent, you can use, like, Make Me Host, for example. So I'll just go to Ent Gaming, um, and you'll basically make an account, and this is pretty much Ent Gaming link. So you would just click the link here. So from the link, you're going to go to the list of added maps, and inside the list of added maps, these are all the maps I currently have added. Uh, you're just going to go ahead and, and type in the filter. So the game we're playing is TKOK, so you would search it, and then you'll see a gigantic list of all of these maps here. All you got to do is Control F, TKOK, or, you know, whatever game of your choosing, and you'll see all of them here. Now, the version that we are playing on specifically, and remember the version is extremely important, it's just like playing an MMO. If you're playing a version backwards, like a previous version, you're not really going to be playing with anybody for the, mo like for the most part. So... Uh, the game that we have, after you do that, you're just going to hit back and go list of added maps, host a game, is TK OK. So this is the version that you would want right here. Uh, where'd it go? 3483-5. This is the one right here. So now we're going to hit host, and you'll see that the game name is Pox72. Now, never copy this, because if you copy this link and try to post it in here, it's gonna ban your client for like 15 minutes. And you could very easily just like close out and join again on like a different realm and that'll be okay. Also look, someone's hosting TKOK right here. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna type pox72. Um, if it doesn't work like it didn't work now, you can copy this. Uh, you can go back and you can just reconnect to the custom game lobby and you can try to join it and it'll work. Uh, if it doesn't work, you can always hit refresh so if I refresh this, for example, it'll tell me my game is already up. Here is the lobby. Um, sometimes you'll get put in queue. And if you get put in queue, I believe you can look at the homepage. You can see your status in there. You can also change where you're hosting from. I think these are on Atlantic. They have East, West, and I don't know the other ones. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit start so I can show you guys a little bit of a class tutorial. Now, for the most part, in my opinion, all classes are great in this game because of synergy. Uh, if you don't know what the word synergy means, it basically is like how classes work together with, like how they mesh together, right? <clears throat> but there are a lot of classes that I do not recommend for newer players to play. And it's not like I'm saying, oh, this is hard for you, don't play it, but it's better late game. It's literally just saying, don't play this until you have an idea of how the game works. And then if you want to make a new character, just make the character, right? Because I want you guys to succeed. I don't want you to just like play this game like, oh my god, this class is shit, and then quit. So... Once you get into the game on TKOK, okay, there's a very, very, very important button that you can click. So, when you're in this game, like right here, this is called the Novice Test Mode. By clicking the Novice Test Mode, you will get a level 30 character, which is pretty far, well, it's like, it's like mid-game, we'll call it. 
you get a free level 30 character, you cannot save, you're given an entire set of gear, um, all, like really good gear, and you can go test out, you can keep respecking, you can literally look at what you want on the character before you play it to see how it feels. But it doesn't give you all of this stuff because max level is 50. The highest I've been, I think, is 35 or 36. Every two levels you get talents, and there are breakpoint talents, depending on your class, at like 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, sometimes 36, 38. So you won't be able to get everything, but you can definitely get an idea of your character. So, um, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go ahead and pick this test mode, though. I want to show you something else. For newer players, always recommend normal. TKOK is not the kind of game where you're like, oh, I'm really good and experienced in games, I'm going to pick Legendary or Hardcore. That's not how the game works. If you read it, the XP is 100% and the gold is 100%. Let me turn on the music. So, that, oh, did that not work? Here we go. I don't think there's any music anyway. The XP is 100 and the gold is 100. You can see the item drop rate, depending on your party, is 0.22 to 0.34 for epics. What that means is Vexillance mode, uh, which is, if you've watched my previous video, uh, every single boss, or if you've watched the uh, boss skill videos, has a Vexillance mode that you can do. Typically, you won't really do it too often in normal because you have a very low chance of getting a drop, but in legendary mode, you can see you're guaranteed at least one epic. Um, this is what legendary mode is really used for. You don't use legendary mode to progress unless you feel really comfortable with your group. Use it for XP farming with your stuck and or specifically farming legendaries off of bosses because if you're playing with a, you know, a decent sized party, you have a pretty okay chance at two epics. Hardcore is when you're already geared, right? And you're ready to go back and redo the content either A, because you want to save a lot of time or B, because it's just more efficient for you. Again, if you die in this difficulty, you are dead on your character until you remake the game. You're literally, you're gone. Even if you kill the boss and get the loot, you still have to get back to town without dying. So these are more like, my character is geared, I know, I, I want to figure out what I'm doing and play it. Um, you can start off on Legendary, but again, you know, I've given my opinion really on it. Uh, the other modes, you don't have to worry about this. This is like end game stuff. If you play that far into it, it'll, it's all self-explanatory. So we're going to just start with normal. Now, there's a wide variety of classes here. Uh, you cannot play the Necromancer and you cannot play the Fighter. So I'm going to just start with classes that I recommend. So let's start with tanks. So we're going to go tank. Uh, we'll, we'll start with tanks. So the tanks of the game we have as followed, uh, for the most part at least, Warrior. Warrior is probably one of the easiest tanks to play. Very simple, very straightforward, um, has really good scaling, uh, is, has I think the easiest time capping their block. Just all around a very easy player, like playing tank. There's nothing super special or quirky with it. Um, they're really good because of their battle orders. It gives a max HP buff. Any type of character that gives a buff, specifically like HP, very, very strong. Arcanist. Actually, that's right. We're going over tanks. Okay. Earthquaker. I do not recommend this guy. He is one of the new classes. Um, one of the big things about this class, because I tried him out early, is he gets a rebirth totem, which allows him to come back to life. The problem with coming back to life is if you're doing something like uh, I don't know, you're doing legendary progression, for example. If you die and come back to life, you still lose like 15 or 20% of your XP. So it's not bad, but he's a really niche character. And I can I can see him very strong for like higher end content. Uh, because you can spec your totem to bring back multiple people. But for just straight raw tanking and learning the game, do not recommend this guy. Uh, Aromancer is kind of a unique character. Uh, with He's a caster DP. That's right, tanks. Just kidding. Let's go back. Okay, Druid. Uh, Druid Bear Tank is one of my favorite tanks. Uh, he's actually my main. Uh, bear Tanking is kind of odd because you don't have direct taunts like Warrior. Warrior, you literally press a button, you taunt. Uh, bear Tank has a taunt that silences him, so it's kind of Kappa. But it's really good because it full heals you after. Uh, they have the highest uh, HP scaling in the game, I want to say, because of their buffs that just literally buff them. Druids are unique in the sense that they can play everything. So you can play caster form DPS, you can play Trent Healer, you can play Feral, which is physical DPS, which is melee, and you have Bear Tank. However, Druid healing at the beginning is shit 
Actually, I think Druid healing the whole game is shit. I think they're better at support. I'm just saying that in case you try to play a Druid healer. Um, and Druid tanking, pretty much Druid in every form for the most part, slacks until you get a bit of gear. I want to say caster form DPS is always pretty solid though. Um, next tank would be Chaotic Knight. Alright, Chaotic Knight is another tank um, that I sort of recommend and sort of do not recommend. He is a lot more like suitable for tanking than the Barbarian dude I showed you guys. But he's more DPS and kind of like, he's like a rogue tank, I guess you could say, right? So he's got like armor breaks, so he reduces armor. He has mind blade, which is like a little bit of damage that you'll use for like generating threat. He has haste, which is a AOE party buff for like agility and movement speed. Movement speed, another really, really cool stat. Uh, and cleanse. So he actually has a self heal that he can pretty much spam. And he has a single target pull. Which is like, you know, get over here. So he's a lot more unique than the warrior. Warrior is just fucking, you know, zug zug me go in front, right? Um, so that's one thing to note, but very solid tank. Also kind of a, a, a unique twist. He has a DPS spec at like higher level for like legitimate DPS. And I think that covers all of the tanks. So we're going to skip tanks now. Let me go to healers. Let's actually put on some music though, because I thought it was going to play some music, but I guess it said F you, so... Let's go ahead and jump into healers. My favorite role. Okay, so in terms of healers that I would recommend at the beginning, Medicaster. I do not recommend Medicaster at all. Medicaster, I see falling under the same category as the Barbarian dude. Very niche character, requires a lot of gear, uh, and is like a hybrid character. So I just, I really would not recommend Medicaster for a first time healer. I would definitely recommend something else more like Paladin. Uh, Paladin is a bit more, if you read the prompt, a good healer, more complicated to use well than Cleric. <laughs> uh, Paladin is a bit more difficult to use than your standard healer because he's melee and he is like a combo healer later on into the game. A big thing is like group synergy because Paladin's main AoE heal is called Divine Wrath or one of his main ones, which requires him to run up to a boss. So be careful of body block hit the boss with a skill, and then everyone around the boss gets healed. But again, when people get scared and they take damage, what do they do? They run away from the healer. So really important on coordination when you're playing Paladin. Uh, next up, we would have for healers, Cleric. Uh, I personally have never really played much of Cleric because I'm like the off meta kid, but Cleric, super solid, very easy to play. Um, Flash of Light has a two second cooldown. You're constantly just popping off heals. Um, actually a DP is like a, is like a really good buffer because his buff that he gets here, Divine Protection. No, 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 no. Inner, Inner Power. Inner Power, spoiler, gives like crit multi later on in the game. So that's like super, super, super good. Um, highly recommend Cleric. What else is there on this list? Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman, in my opinion, is probably like one of the easiest healers to play. Um, just because he has, so he has Unstable Potion, I can't really show you his skills. Unstable Potion, which you throw a potion, and instead of healing them directly, it ramps up their life regeneration like crazy, like steroids. Which means it's not considered healing, or it, I don't know exactly how it works, it's kind of weird, but it doesn't generate threat because it's life regeneration. So you can just chuck out potions anytime a tank goes in, throw a potion, you don't ever have to worry about initial threat. Uh, healing Chain is crazy strong. You basically just, you know, pop your healing chain, it bounces to your whole party. Um, you also have a totem here that increases maximum health. I don't really like this. You have a totem that heals every second. This totem becomes pretty ridiculous. I actually have a Shadow Shaman healer and I play crit healer. And crit healer is pretty, pretty crazy when you have a totem that ticks like four times a second, three times a second, and I have like 40% crit chance. So you like guarantee a crit every second, plus you're like, you know, spam healing. So I really recommend Shadow Shaman. However, according to what people say, Shadow Shaman's tank healing falls off later, because if you look at a lot of his talents, past level 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50 around there is typically when like people get their big boy talents. A lot of Shadow Shaman is like hybrid because he has one skill for DPS that can be specced into so much. So he's really good as like a utility DPS, uh, but still as main healing for the majority of the game, highly recommend him. 
I think that covers... Oh, I already talked about Druid Healer, so I gave my opinion on that dude. All right, so next I'm going to go into, like, kind of supporty characters. Um, when I say supporty, I don't mean they have to be support. I just mean, like, they have the option of playing sort of as support, even if you're, like, the main DPS. Basically, they just have stuff that buffs other people for the most part. Uh, Shadow Blade, really good. If I remember correctly, they had pretty decent healing. Um, it's not like a main healer, it's just to help keep the party alive when there's a lot of shit going on. Very strong character if you play properly, has a lot of party synergy because it buffs tons of things and does really good damage. Um, a lot of his damage comes from this skill called Malediction, so it is another coordinated character you have to play with because people are going to burst when you apply your Malediction, which then explodes based off of the amount of damage dealt and then plus something else. Uh, actually, I'm just going to go over the rest of the DPS essentially. Phantom Stalker, my number one favorite DPS in the game. It's it's pretty much like your Trindamir of the game. It's really easy. You have like three buttons. You click them. You scale. You like agi crit damage. You just destroy everything. Uh, a lot of there's a lot of you know confusion around on like what people should play. If you want to play a DPS and you don't know what to play, you play a Phantom Stalker. You win the game. Uh, enough said. Um, there are also like auto attack builds you can play with characters, but that's like later on in the game where you get gear. Uh, Chrono Warper. Do not recommend this character. It's a unique character that has half of their tree split between power and energy, but it's not a hybrid class. So there's classes like the Chaos. Oh, that's something I forgot as well. This guy, the Chaotic Knight, is a hybrid class that uses um spell power and attack power and he can combine them to make like fusion power or whatever combined power um that's something a bit complicated on him this guy doesn't have that but he literally goes one or the other or i guess you can do something as a mix in the middle i played him as like essentially like the attack damage spec because i didn't like the caster spec and the attack damage spec was pretty good um it was just I don't know, I don't think it was as good as something else though. But again, another one of those classes that takes a little bit to scale, and then once you understand them, they're great to go. Uh, Hydromancer is another character that I really recommend as like a support role. More damage oriented than like the Shadow Shaman. Um, Shadow Shaman actually can't even really go damage until later on. Hydromancer is cool because she has a bubble. I think she's one of the only classes, if not the only class with a bubble, which makes her really strong. Uh, centered around a lot of slows and even has healing. Pyromancer, opposite of the Hydromancer. Uh, I personally don't really recommend Pyromancer too much. Um, I don't think she's bad at all. She's kind of like the Phantom Stalker of casters, but she's more AoE. I don't know, she's kind of like, she's like decent at what she does, but I've never really seen anyone too crazy with Pyromancer. Uh, again, I think all classes are pretty good once you learn how to play them. There is something unique that she gets, which is Fire Form, which increases all fire damage while you have the buff active. So I'm sure if you play around that, you're crazy good. But if you want the characters with like the long cast that create meteors, like meteors channeled, it's fucking landing. If it hits the pack, the pack is dead. Pyromancer is for you. Uh, Arcanist. Arcanist is a kind of a unique character because he works a lot on channeling. Drain Spirit is like kind of like a channel drain that he can do, and he can spec into his drain to actually make it tick even quicker. So that's pretty cool. And he can also leech off of his drain. So he's kind of a unique guy, um, kind of similar to the power Pyromancer, how he has a buff that increases his damage, except his buff is like temporary. Her buff, I think you just toggle, but it drains your mana. These are all like casters for the most part as well. Uh, Aeromancer, I think I didn't really talk too much about him. I actually have an Aeromancer like level 19 or so. I do not recommend this guy as a starter just because it looks like a lot of his kit is kind of, it's like bouncing around and blinking around, but you have to really pay attention to your mana. And I don't really think his single target is good until 30 because he gets a talent that makes it so his chain lightning can bounce off of his nuclei so if you have a chain lightning that bounces 13 times but you hit a boss it can only bounce one time if you put a nuclei down it now bounces seven times to the boss or six times depending on you know your rng so that's pretty cool um but if you want a lightning theme caster here you go uh venomancer i don't know too much about this character but i have a buddy who plays it essentially it's a damage over time character um that has a bit of like quick succession burst it has some really weird party buffs and stuff, like reduced XP, but increased, I don't know what they do, if it's item drop rate or something. They have some just really odd buffs. Uh, but overall, I've seen them do pretty pretty good single target. Uh, this character, kind of like the Pyromancer, has to have uh, a bit of coordination because a lot of their, their AoEs are like 
in an air like an area a lot of their aoe's are in an area kappa but yeah like essentially the tank has to be positioning properly for like maximum dps for a venomancer uh druid i really like druid caster form at the beginning i think feral lacks a little but i still think like they're both pretty solid options uh, I really personally like Druid Caster. I don't ever see them, but I think that they're great because I believe they have a Magic Resistance Aura, which Magic Res is OP in this game. Um, so they're super cool. Barb. Barb, Barb, Barb. If you want to be Zug Zug and you want to be a new player, <laughs> I recommend Barb, dude, as like physical DPS. It's not crazy good single target at the beginning. Uh, once you start specking into Deep Slice, you do start to do pretty nice numbers. The big thing about Barb, though, is their Warcry. Their Warcry can be specced into Life Regen, and Life Regen is very important in this game because, one, not only does it help out with the healer, but, two, there's a lot of gear you're going to get in this game that's going to be, like, crazy extreme in one stat and way lower in the other. So, for example, Recondite Rings. I don't remember what they give, but let's use an example. 7% attack crit chance, 82% attack crit power, minus 17 life regen. It'll be something like that. Uh, and Barb literally allows your whole party, if not, well, you know, it basically allows you to not have to sacrifice a piece of gear, and you can go way more into DPS by having a Barb in your party. And early game, it's really, really good, because Warcry keeps up, like, it basically prevents dots from killing newbies at the beginning. Highly recommend Barb, really straightforward character. Uh, Ranger, another very solid character for damage, uh, really good AoE, pretty decent single target, does actually have a heal if you look at Water Arrow, uh, I do believe you could just like ping someone with a Water Arrow to heal them, another super solid character, she does actually have a trap spec later, uh, trap summons a trap and then you have to click one of four like keybinds or buttons, I don't know them, there's like fire, ice, lightning and poison trap maybe, I don't really know exactly what, but like way later on, I think 36 or 40, you can actually spec into like trap mastery and you can make it so when you place your trap, it automatically detonates, explodes all four traps and all four of the traps will apply the talents you spec into on your talent tree. So if you want to play a trapper, I mean, hmm, question mark. And then we got Phantom Stalker and that's pretty much about it. So with that being said, uh, I'm just going to explain a little bit more and then I'm just going to go ahead and end this video because I know it's a bit long already. So I'm going to just pick Miss Phantom Stalker. And uh, you can see there's a lot of people. Well, there's a game instructor here who can kind of help you out. I don't actually know what he says, but I'm going to go ahead and help you guys out. So this is the first town called Tolcom. And the important things to note about Tolcom is nothing. So in the actions menu, if you click this, you're going to have a chat. This is how you're going to communicate with every single NPC in the game. When you pick up a quest, it's going to pick it up for everybody, but it's individual turn in, meaning that everyone has to turn their quest in. So at the beginning of the game, there's going to be this guy. Talk to him. And you're going to hit accept. And then you hit goodbye. And then you're going to come over here. And this is essentially going to activate all of your quests for this zone for the most part. Come on, buddy. So we're going to talk to the village elder. Talk to her. And you'll see like a bunch of quests are now open in the town here. If you get an item from the quest, it'll be in your inventory here, and you can always look in your quests to see exactly what you need to do for your quests. Questing is really good because it's it's one of the main ways to level for the most part, and if you remake the game, you can do the quests again, but XP is capped at a certain amount, so you can't just keep farming like low-level content. That's why I say this is not a very beginner-friendly game, because you cannot progress that far solo. Maybe if you're really good and you use the new system here, these like these mercenaries that are like brand new, you can get decently far. But for the most part, you're going to get halted because you can't just like AFK farm and stuff, right? So after you've picked up your quests and you go out over here to do them, um, there's another thing that you need to notice. So elixirs, potions, and all sorts of goodies over here are really, really important. And here's why. You should have an elixir on your character pretty much 100% of the time. Maybe not right at the start because, you, you know, like, you don't really have any gold. Pretty much every single character at the start of the game is going to use an elixir of spirit because every three seconds you restore two flat plus 2% of your max mana. 
you don't really have much regeneration in combat. You do regenerate a lot out of combat, but these are very important for sustained fights, like if you're just questing or if you're killing bosses. Later on, once you gear your characters out, there's gonna be way more types of elixirs than everything else. Remember, this isn't like a potion. It doesn't share the cooldown of anything. It's just a buff. You just click it and it's on you for 10 minutes. Uh, potions are in here. It's important to note that healing potions and mana potions share a cooldown. Smoke screens and healing wards share a cooldown. For bosses, you'll pretty much have smokes up majority of the time. Uh, DPS will be using healing potions and mana potions are always really good. And then to purchase from equipment vendors, you're simply going to purchase. Like you just click them and you would be like, oh, I want this. Click. Oopsies. Do I not have enough for this? Oh, maybe I have to put it here. Oh, I double click. Sorry, double click. There you go. And that pretty much sums up the beginning of the game for TKOK. Uh, just to cover a few more things. There's a passive tree on the left and a passive tree on the right. The left side tree is pretty much actives. The right side is all passives. However, there's like empowered versions of skills. So if you look at like a similar icon, this is Gash. This is probably like empowered Gash. There's improved Gash. This would be a passive. It doesn't really amp anything up. You can see all of your stats on the view attributes button over here. Um, for beginners in the game, I recommend the following. If you're playing a tank, I recommend four con per level. If you're, or you can do like three con, one strength. If you're playing a DPS with a, you know, like agility, then you would be three dex and one con. If you're playing like a berserker, like strength based, I'd recommend three strength, one con. And if you're playing a healer slash caster, I recommend three wisdom, one con. If you want to go crit, once you get the gear, probably around level 20 to 30, you'll respec and go crit. If you're a DPS, that would probably be intelligence. Um, both characters use like the same intelligence one. I guess you could even check out like reflexes. I'm not really sure how that one works. Uh, and then one or two more things to show you guys. I know this is a really long video. I apologize, but I want to make sure I can help you guys out as much as possible. Uh, I did have a buddy, one of my uh, good moderators, Otto, actually helped me out with, well, actually made this document for you guys. So if you're familiar with the TKOK Discord, I don't really like to talk too much about this Discord because I'll be honest, I don't really like a lot of people in here. Um, not that there's anything wrong with them, I just don't really like when people try to tell me what to do as a live streamer. Um, that, sorry, that's just life. So you can always come into this bot right here in the bot commands and you can use commands here, you can read all this stuff to bring up items and everything else and the bot will display everything. For people who don't really want to do that and want an easier one, uh, my buddy actually pulled a lot of the, pretty much the items directly off of that. So he created a, a, uh, a Google Docs of the drop table of the bosses. And it's already set up for all the low level bosses for you guys. So you can see everything that they drop. So everything is explained to you. Um, so Broodmother is the first boss. Nerith is the second boss. Uh, then we have Sand Golem, which is Act 3 boss. Naztar and Karax are kind of put together, and then there's more to come. Avnos, Karnos, he's actually working on this as we speak right now. So I'm going to explain how this document works a little bit. It's automatically built in already so that you can search for it. That's the main purpose of it. So if you're playing a Berserker uh, and you want to find an axe, you could just type in axe. And you can see here what highlights the axe of the Fallen right here. So, um, or if your cloth does work with like cloth search... Yeah, here, ever silk slippers. You can see everything tags it for cloth, etc. So, <clears throat> if you look at this, um, Broodmother doesn't have any enchanted yellow drops because she's still the first boss. So the only main drops to note are from VX mode, which we spoke about in Legendary, and you can see all of the stuff here and what it gives. There's four pieces: two rings and two necklaces. Nerith starts to drop yellow gear. The only thing he drops for yellow gear are boots. So there's ever silk slippers cloth. Never Silk Slippers Cloth. The difference is flat spell power versus crit. And then under here, you can see these are leather and leather and male and male. So vice versa, crit, non-crit. Then you can see the epic drops. Nerith's epics are main hand weapons. And you can see all the way sword, bow, dagger, staff, mace, etc, etc. There is actually more loot past this, which is called UVX mode. But if you've gotten to UVX mode, then you don't really need my help, so you don't really have to worry about it. So this will explain all of the beginning stuff for you guys and should honestly help you guys get jump started um, as long as you put a little bit of, you know, uh, yeah. So anyway, that's pretty much about it. 
I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I hope this helped you guys out a little bit. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Again, I apologize for the lengthy 30 minute tutorial guide. But anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves and I'll see you boys all tomorrow.